Hello everyone, my name is Mark Hipshire and I am from Knoxville, Tennessee in the US. Now, as much as I would like to be in Brussels right now, unfortunately ticket prices were way too high for me. So this is my home video submission to the 2018 Charming Recruitment event and I really hope you like it. So beginning with a little bit of background information on me, I stayed in Knoxville for my undergraduate degree and I studied at the University of Tennessee where I graduated in 2016 with a Bachelor's of Science in Chemistry. And then I went immediately into my master's degree and it was a great program, it was an Erasmus Mundus program. And it was a consortium between three different universities. First we went to the Scottish Association of Marine Sciences, then we went to the University of Crete in Greece, and then we went to the University of Nantes in France. And we studied aquaculture, environment, and society. And alongside my academic ventures, I've also had a lot of opportunities to gain bench laboratory experience, particularly in research. During my undergraduate degree, I spent three years working in an inorganic chemistry lab where we researched crystals that go into PET scanners for cancer detection. And then what we were particularly looking for were new ways to synthesize these crystals. And one in particular that I worked with was solution combustion synthesis where we got to blow up a bunch of solutions and we were left with crystalline nanoparticles at the end. And I also had two major research opportunities during my master's degree. The first was an internship at the Hellenic Center for Marine Research. And there I was part of a project where we looked at how various ambient temperatures affected the growth rates of a fin fish called greater amberjack. And it's of great interest to Greece right now and they want to intensively cultivate it. The other project, we looked at the digestibility of various diets that were being fed to sea bass and sea bream. These are also two species that are of interest to Greece. And for my master's thesis, I was working with a pigment called phycoerythrin. It's a red pigment that we would like to use in food dyes in France. However, it's difficult to extract and I was working with a preliminary study to test how fermentation could be used to extract phycoerythrin from red seaweeds that are commonly found along the west coast of France. From these research opportunities, I gained a lot of experience with processes like solvent extractions or inoculating bacterial mediums, and I also gained a lot of analytical chemistry experience. I became familiar with processes like X-ray diffraction, UV-vis spectroscopy, or mass spectrometry, among others and I'm really hoping that these experiences will prove useful during the PhD. So, to get to specifics, I'm applying for a position within Work Package 1 and it is ESR Position 1, which is Chemistry and Chemical Engineering Concepts for Kids. And I would be working with Dr. Smets to translate fundamental chemistry and chemical engineering concepts into intuitive activities embedded in a game environment. One of the other stated goals of the project is to create a database of chemical reactions and chemical characteristics that would be appropriate for the project in the future. And I would be working with the other ESR positions and I would kind of serve as a bit of a chemistry reference for the game designer and the educational specialists. Now moving on to the particulars of the project. In addition to describing my technical background, my advisor has also asked me to describe how I would approach the project in the first few months and which activities I would take to get started. First and foremost, there's going to be a bit of a settling in period where I need to get acquainted with the other aspects of the project and find out in which areas my knowledge is weak. When I made the transition from my undergraduate degree to my master's degree, I was going from chemistry to aquaculture. Now there's a lot of chemistry in aquaculture, but there's also a lot of biology and other marine sciences that I wasn't familiar with. So it took a lot of reading for me to be able to catch up. The same thing can be said for this PhD. I'm going to need to figure out what areas I'm weakest in and fill in the gaps. For example, I know that I've tutored during my undergraduate and master's degree as a way to gain cash on the side. But just because I've tutored, that doesn't make me intimately familiar with all of the latest pedagogical strategies that are used for children. Also, I've been a gamer my whole life, but just because I'm a gamer, that doesn't make me intimately familiar with the video game design process. These are areas where I'm going to have to work on, and it will probably influence my course selection during my first year of studies. 
However, unlike my master's degree, these PhDs are not devoted solely to the individual studies of us students. We're going to be part of a greater holistic idea devoted towards improving chemical education and science communication throughout Europe. Therefore, in addition to figuring out where I'm weak and where I need to work, I also need to use my strengths to help my team members. And I think this will be particularly important when collaborating between work packages. Because the fundamental concepts and material characteristics that we're going to be introducing to the kids may very well be setting them up to get familiar with the interfaces that they're going to see in the teaching and the training parts of this program. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be making a database of chemical reactions and chemical characteristics. And I think it would be very cool if we could create overlap between the motivation portion of the project and the teaching and training portions of the project so that the concepts they see in the motivation portion get expounded upon and they're building upon previous knowledge as they're taught and trained in the future. Additionally, I would also like to deepen some of my own skills and technical abilities. And one particular area that I would like to deepen is video production. In the last two years, I've been blogging, I've been getting on Instagram and creating videos, and I've been sharing my adventures all across Europe and dancing and dance festivals with all of my friends and I've even managed to blog about some of my experiments that I did in the lab during my masters. Now to be completely straightforward with you, I am still at the amateur level, but this is something I'm passionate about. It's, n it's something I know I'm going to improve upon and continue doing regardless of what happens in the next three years. And I think it would be very cool if we could make this database of chemical reactions and chemical characteristics a digital database, perhaps with videos. I think it would be awesome if we could create perhaps a, a YouTube series where we got kids involved and we actually tried to attempt to teach these kids these reactions. And then from the YouTube series we could say, okay, the kids like this, maybe we could use this in one of our further iterations. Or if they didn't, we might need to tweak it. And that way with each iteration of the project, we have more information and we're not just shooting in the dark. During the senior year of my undergraduate degree, I had the opportunity to take a design process course. The class focused on using techniques like mind mapping and group discussions to help us clarify our ideas. Here you can see photos of our various prototypes. We worked on a wide variety of items like candy wrappers, furniture, and even a prototype board game for incoming freshmen. However, the largest takeaway we had from the course is that it's important to maximize your iterations and get your product in front of your test subjects as often as possible in order to continually critique it. This is something that I believe would be accomplished with a video series and is also a strategy that I would employ when working on our intended educational board game. I don't want to be the guy that just creates a list of chemical reactions and says, here's your database, I've done my work, and now I'm done. I would love to work on videos or social media and I would love to work with anybody that would be interested in taking the project in that direction because I'm applying for this PhD specifically because I want to work with people. So moving on, Dr. Smets has also asked me to provide a peer-reviewed document and it was about how I could find a game that was used to teach children mathematics and not chemistry and the paper, the paper I found is entitled the wearable learning cloud platform for the creation of embodied multiplayer math games. I think they need a few more words in that title. So the reason I chose this paper is um, it, it had a very interesting game environment. I just recently played a game called Hidden Agenda. It's a multiplayer game where you and your friends work together to solve a gritty crime thriller type mystery using your phones. Now. I won't give away any spoilers, but I will say that the simple interface with the phones was a lot of fun and it kind of turned the game into a video game style of board game night at your friend's house. And the whole time I had this PhD in the back of my head, I was thinking, you know, this might actually be a cool way to teach kids about science. And in fact, that's what the study does. They take an educational game called Estimate It and they took it to three different classrooms. The first two studies were conducted in the Philippines with a group of students that were aged 9 to 10 and they had the students play the game and they used their phones and smart watches to solve these mathematical problems. And then they compared the test scores of the students who had played the game versus the students who had not. 
Here you can see that the post-test mean of the students who had played the game and received the lecture was nearly two points higher than the post-test mean of the students who had not and had only received the lecture. The test consisted of 14 questions that were valued at one point each. The second portion of the study was conducted with high school students. Now these high school students weren't just trying to play the game to solve their problems. In fact, they used the phones to scan in objects from around the room into the game and then they were actually able to create their own problem. So they were drifting from this idea where they were using the game solely as a learning tool and they were actually going into the area of creating problems with the game. And for me, that seems like a better way to gain a, a true understanding of what you're working with. I think these results and the ideas included in the game are probably something similar along the lines of what we will be investigating and it'd be interesting to see if this comes up in a group discussion when we're working on the project. I've linked all the papers and all the studies below in the description of the YouTube video. Okay, now on to the fun part of the presentation, the soft skills. Uh, the thing I like to say is that my background is inherently interdisciplinary. In addition to the Bachelor's of Science I got in Chemistry in my undergrad, I also got a second major in French and I got a minor in Portuguese and I took time to study abroad in Brazil and Portugal. Foreign languages and integrating into foreign cultures has always been an important part of my life. My mom is from Brazil so I always grew up with her friends that were from other countries and their kids all around me and we were all from different places. That's why during my master's I had the absolute time of my life and it's one of the most important experiences in my life because I was part of a cohort of 24 different people from 19 different countries and all of us traveled as a cohesive unit from Scotland to Greece to France and in that time we sort of became a family. We learned to depend on one another. Anytime there was a big problem, we had to look to our group mates because we were all in different countries. None of us had our family there. And in two years, I mean, we had car accidents, we had people lose their luggage at airports, we had people who had terrible problems with their landlords, and you learn to become friends and, and you, you have this temporary family with one another. And that's something that I definitely see happening during the PhD. This project is going to scatter us all over Europe, and we're all going to be in different countries. But one thing that will be consistent throughout all three years is we're going to be working together, talking to one another, seeing one another, and that's when we're going to start to build these bonds and friendships. I've always been an extroverted person. So for me, I care about the people around me. And I'm going to do everything I can to make the people around me comfortable because I hold that just as important as the project goals themselves. Because I believe if we have a strong group, we're going to have a strong project and we're going to have great results. If I'm selected, you should definitely expect to see me walking into the room, making a scene, being silly, and trying to keep things lighthearted and fun. But that being said, over those two years, I learned that life happens and not everything's going to be easy. So I understand that if my group members are struggling, I'm not going to run away from the problem. I'm going to get involved in my group members' lives and hopefully be somebody that they can look to for support. As I mentioned earlier, I'm applying for this project because I want to work with people. Now, for the last seven years of my life, I've been in laboratory environments. I did get to travel a lot and I had a lot of fun and every chance I got I was dancing, but now I'm, I'm trying to combine my creative experience with my technical skills. And that's something that I see as a future opportunity through the Charming Project. I would love to be a science communicator or a science educator. I would love to be somebody like the next Neil deGrasse Tyson or Bill Nye the Science Guy, but I prefer neckties over bow ties. That's just me. So there you have it. I've reached the end of my presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys thought it was funny and I sincerely hope that I get to see some of you guys very soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>